I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going to go back to our relinking of our access front end file using VBScript, and we're going to convert it to use a table based approach so that we can put a list of all of our tables that we want in our access front end uh, in a table, and then we can automatically relink all, relink all of those tables uh, to one backend or various backends, depending on whatever kind of application that you have. So without further ado, let's get to our VB script relinking part two. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so several of you guys have uh, mentioned that you'd like to uh, see the relinking process using tables, and so thanks for requesting that. Uh, it was a comment that I made at the end of our last video where we did uh, VB script linking, and we made this file here. And you know, we had our front end and our back end uh, variables, and then you know, we created a delete function to delete the old link and a and a link table uh, function to you know link a single table and then we linked a bunch of tables and you guys were saying well you know how can we you know relink this uh, using a table based approach so we don't have to hard code those table names in there and so we can do that so you can see this directory here has a, a, a front end and a back end and this front end file has no table links in it it just has a settings file and if I you know, if I was to re run this uh, uh, relink procedure here, um, it's it will you know relink this um, file to the backend that's in the same uh, in the same directory. And so you can see there, it popped up and had a message saying that it was done. Um, and so uh, that is basically the relinking process. And so now if I reopen my front end there you can see there's all of my candy uh, candy table candy tables that I chose to to link and you can see in the little tooltip that shows there it gives the you know the di or directory and file that it's the back end is in or where the back end resides and you can see I can open these tables and I can move around in here and work on those as much as I want and you can see there's the the lock for the back end, so you can you can definitely see that the back end is being used by the front end, and so that's sort of like you know what we did in our first episode on relinking using VB script, and it was very very handy. You could totally see you know how easy it was to to link this stuff, but but the problem was is that we had you know all of these like you know these hard coded links in here which we didn't really want to to have in our code whoops um, and uh, and so what we want to do is create an ability to use a table based approach and so you can see up above here you know we've got our database and our workspace and our app that we've created in VB script which is super handy uh, for us to be able to work with our access database um, and uh, it those objects that are already created there are going to make it super easy for us to do this. So this is the settings file that was in the front end. I don't think I was using that for anything here. Uh, we used that in our deployment video. You can go back to that video uh, where I actually deployed, um, you know, using VB script as well, deployed the files. But in this case, we're not going to use that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new table. Um, I just did a, you know, create and then table design, and we'll just put a table ID with an auto number on there, and I'll just say backend DB, and then the table name that we want, and then the alias name that we want to use. We'll keep it simple here. So we've got four fields. One is going to be an ID. That's just going to be a primary key that has an auto number, and so I'll just save that. Um, and I'll just call it uh, a table, relink tables, or something like that. And uh, there we go. Okay, so now we've got a table that we can use to make a list of all the links that we want. And this table can be in the back end file, or you can put it in the front end file. 
Some people, they like to put it in the front end file. That's what I've done here today. Um, and uh, some people like to put it in the back end file. It could be on an ODBC linked uh, table somewhere else in your organization. It doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as your VB script can find it, um, then you're good to go. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to get the, the name of the back end database. So in this case, it's uh, C dev test app and mybe.accdb. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take that source name of the table, like the, the name of the table that's in the back end. And we, we have these because we did this last time, but we hard coded it. So we've got candy and candy link, candy order, candy order link, candy makers, candy makers link, etc. Um, and we've got the, the second of each of those is the alias. And so, um, so the name of the table in the back end is candy event, for example. And then the name that we want our link to be in our front end is candy event link. And so we can do the same for the rest of these. It would be candy link, or uh, pardon me, candy, and then candy link. Um, and then, uh, you know, the candy orders, I think, was, uh, was one of them, candy makers. And uh, now, uh, you can use the same name for both of those if you wanted. Say you wanted to have the exact same name uh, as the alias. Um, I like to put it in there just because it's a good option uh, if you need to. There are cases where you need to have a different table name. Uh, but here, uh, this is very straightforward. So now we've got four rows that represents each of those, those uh, table links that are in this fictional application. And I can go and delete all the links that are there if I want. Um, and um, I've got my settings table and my relink table. Um, and those are going to be uh, super handy. So I can go and, and I'll close this and, uh, and then we'll check it out. And I'll save the layout there. And now what we can do is we can go back to our code and we can sort of take a look at um, how we're going to change this um, that we created last time, this script, to work with our new table. And so that's where we can get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is let's get rid of all this, this repetitive relink stuff that we did before. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit more dynamic by adding a table-based approach. And so uh, we're going to add a couple new variables. You, you do not actually need to declare variables in VBScript. Um, you can, and it makes it nice uh, when you're using like a, you know, this is Notepad++, if I declare the variable, then it shows up in the IntelliSense-like feature of Notepad++. So, so here what you can do is you can do, you know, we'll set our RST, that's going to be our record set that we're going to open up. And so I'll just say db.openRecordSet, and I'll say table, and I, oh, what was it called? Table, I think table relink tables. <laughs> and uh, too many tables in that statement. Uh, and uh, there we go. So table relink statement. And uh, you can use the, uh, you know, the DB open snapshot and, and stuff like that to make it uh, a snapshot. But you have to use the numbers like we did up above there where it says DB use jet. Um, but we won't worry about that for this ex exercise. We'll open the default, which is a Dynaset. Um, and uh, we're going to make a loop. So we'll do until rst.eof, so that's going to start at the beginning, and then we're going to make sure to put that rst.move next, or else it will run forever, and you'll have to task manager cl and close it. Um, and uh, so we're going to loop through our, our record set, and we're on each row, uh, we're going to grab the names so the, the path of the back end, the, the name of the table, and the alias, we're going to grab those on each record as, as it loops through the record set, and we're going to link that table to the, to the back end. Um, so I've created two variables, uh, a table and an alias. And as you'll see down below where we created our 
link link my table. Uh, we we use alias and table and a source, which is actually a, a table. That's a source table. Uh, we use those as arguments uh, for that uh, for that subroutine. So what we're going to do is um, now this is uh, how I like to do these things. So I'm going to use the uh, the back end or pardon me. I'm going to use variables for each of the names. So I'm going to say you know what's the name of the table. Uh, str table that's a string for table and it's going to be uh, what was the name of that I think it was table name yeah and the other one was alias name I think I've already forgotten the names of the tables <laughs> of the fields that I created so um, let's see here so we'll do table table alias and uh, and then the so now we've got a back end a table and an alias that we're going to use and then in order to um, to run our function uh, we're going to use this link my table down here so because we created one subroutine that will link one table if we just give it the parameters that it needs and so that makes it sort of a reusable piece of code there and uh, so I'm going to say link my table and then we'll put in the DB which we, we set up above to the workspace.open database so that's DB the second argument is the back end so we'll put strbe in there which we loaded just uh, two lines or three lines above there and we'll put in the name of the table and the alias that we want to call the table in our front end database here and so now we've got link my table um, our database uh, uh, variable our backend string variable the table variable and the alias variable and we're loading those using uh, entries from from the uh, from the table and so uh, and that should just about do it and uh, we should go back and check our table here which I have open I just want to make sure the backend oh it's called backend DB and alias name so I got that wrong. Let's see here. Okay, backend DB and uh, alias name. Now that's why you you see it turn green there, <laughs> because uh, you don't want to use reserved words for your table uh, and field names. Make sure you never call, uh, you know, a field table or or a field or something like that, because uh, you'll run into trouble with reserved words. Um, you always want to make sure that it's unique, and that looks pretty good. I've got everything ready to go here um, that's really all we need I will actually just note here you can see that's rst.eof so that means do this loop until you hit the end of file which is the end of the table and then after it goes through all those it's going to close the record set close the database and then quit the application um, to exit out of this and uh, I'll go up uh, I'll go up above and I'll comment out this uh, because uh, we loaded the backend string before when it was hard coded, and now we don't need that because we're loading that here uh, on each line. So this actually also means that you could have, you know, two different backends that you're getting table links for, or ten different backend files that you're getting table links for. Um, so that means you can link uh, using this sort of um, method you can link many different backends uh, and different kinds of backends too um, so I'll go ahead and I'll I'll just uh, go ahead and start this now just before I do that I'm gonna go and comment this out as well um, this uh, message box just because uh, this is probably gonna run um, silently probably from a user startup folder or or on a scheduled task that's running you know in uh, Windows scheduler so you don't really want to have any pop-ups but I will open this um, directory just in case it happens that we can see how it goes there we should see some action in this folder here and oh it looks like I broke it okay I broke it already <laughs> uh, okay so let's go check that out um, I think I know what that might be Yes, uh, I believe this is because of the, uh, yes, I'm using an access expression there. So that's something that's different um, between 
the different environments. So um, I was using an exclamation point there, like as if I was using Access natively. Um, but actually, in this case, I'm going to I'm going to use the uh, the brackets uh, sort of method of uh, calling my my columns here, so that um, so that it can run uh, outside of access. And so if I run this one now, um, you'll see it looks like it ran without any errors this time. So that's good. Um, if I open my front end file, I should see some links in there. Yep, they're there. Okay. So that worked. So that means it went through that uh, relink table. I can delete these again. And, uh, or I can leave them there because it'll delete them in process as well. I can run it again, I reopen this directly afterwards, and there's all my links. And so from that you can sort of see that's how um, the links uh, can happen there. And we could go back and we could put in, you know, your application was updated. Um, I prefer not to leave a comment in there um, just so that it's cleaner. You'll see it leaves the app open, it suddenly appears in the background behind the message. Uh, but you can see that's been updated there. And that is how you can do table-based relinking using VBScript for your Access front-end applications. Looking for more programmers for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on extending our, our relinking of backends uh, to our front-end files using VBScript. VB if you like what you saw today, please uh, give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you didn't subscribe yet. Click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.